Welcome. My name is Jonathan Sidaway and I'm the Vizu Technical Team Manager. In today's video, we're going to focus on the KES V2. The KES V2 is the OBD system from Alien Tech. It's very easy to do and it's all done by the vehicle's onboard diagnostic port, the OBD, which allows you to tune vehicles very quickly and very easily. If you'd like to know more information, please contact info at vizu.com. During our demo video today, we'll take you through how to use KES V2 and K-Suite, the program it uses. If you'd like to see more of our videos, please see remap101.co.uk for more of our training videos. Welcome to the VZ Workshop. We've got the BMW in-house and we go all connected to the KES via the OBD port. In this video, we won't be showing you how to locate the OBD port of the vehicle. We would recommend you research this to check where the location is before you go to the job. As well as having the OBD connected, just for a little bit of housekeeping, if you'd like to follow me around to the front of the vehicle, we would recommend you have the battery stabilizer connected. The battery stabilizer is there to keep the voltage stable. We would recommend when you're reading the vehicle, a minimum of 12.5 volts up to a maximum of 14 volts. The battery stabilizer is there to keep the vehicle safe and the voltage under control. It is imperative that you always have one connected when you're doing OBD reading and writing. Always ensure your vehicle you're about to tune is in perfect condition. We just run a diagnostic tool on this vehicle to ensure it has no fault codes. The vehicle is in perfect health and is ready to begin the tuning process. Okay, let's start with K-Suite now. So, if you look at the program, you'll see the big KES button with the red outline around the button. This shows the KES is connected to the laptop and it's ready to go. Underneath that, you'll see the K tag button is grayed out. That is because the K tag is not connected to our laptop. To the right of that, you'll see the vehicle list. Let's open it up. Now the vehicle list will default to the KES tab. That's because the KES is connected, but I would always recommend that you select the K-Suite option. This is so you can see the OBD list of what the KES can do and the K-Tag list, which is the bench tool, in one list. This will allow you to quickly and easily work out is a vehicle supported and what tool you need to do it with. Please take note, at the bottom of the screen, it will say reading. If you ever see VR under reading, then that denotes that protocol is a virtual read protocol. What does virtual read mean? Virtual read means the KES does not read the vehicle in front of you. But what it does do is a nice handshake with it. That handshake tells the KES exactly what version of software that vehicle is running. It will then automatically connect to Alentech servers in Italy. And once it's done that connection, it will check to see if they have the matching original on the server. Nine times out of 10, the answer is yes, and the original will be downloaded from the server. It always does depend on Alien Tech having that matching original. If the matching original does not download automatically, I would always still advise you to still submit the file to Vizu Technical Support, because we can help and advise you further at that point. Let's move on. Back at the main screen, we have protocol list. Protocol list is all the protocols the tool supports, but with the engine size and the horsepower and the years all stripped back. Because actually, none of that actually matters. What matters is what manufacturer that car belongs to and what model of ECU. So protocol is, is only useful if you know exactly what ECU is in that vehicle. If you know that and know the car manufacturer, then you'll be able to work out exactly what protocol you need. Going back, the next button in our list is settings. Inside settings, it's basic screen size settings, language settings, just general settings you would expect for a program. Next to that, I have support. And in support, I have logs. What are logs? Logs are basically a report that the tool automatically makes. That report tells us exactly what the tool's just done. If you have any issues reading or writing a vehicle, one of the first things we'll say to you is, can we have the logs? 
because looking through the logs, we can see, for example, that your voltage is too low. And that's probably because a battery stabiliser is not connected to the vehicle. Let's go and proceed. Back at the main screen, we've checked the vehicle's health. We know this vehicle supported OBD. We're good to go. Now, to proceed, you click on the KES button with the big red outline. The system will now proceed to the next window and you'll see the car, the bike, the truck, the tractor and the boat. This is obviously a car, so we'll be picking vehicle type car. Okay, so now we're at our vehicle list. This should look familiar from the list we saw earlier. Except this one has some additional information that we will need to go through. At the very bottom of the screen, you'll see it says the word active on our tool. What this is denoting is this protocol, this protocol 702 for this BMW, is active on my subscription. Well, what is that? When you purchase a KES V2, it comes with one year's license. At the end of the year, that license will expire. Now, we would strongly recommend you always keep your tool up to date and in license. The reason for that is, Alien Tech release protocols and new vehicles on a weekly basis to ensure that you never miss out on tuning a customer's vehicle. Always keep your tool in license so you can make the most of these fantastic updates that come out every week. That way, you'll always see your protocol is active and ready to go. Okay, as well as this, we have on the right-hand side of the program a little button. It looks like an open book with a hand on top. Now, this is the KES manual. You should read the KES manual for every single vehicle that you tune because it has critically important information that you will need to follow for that vehicle. The manual is unique for that vehicle, so you will need to read it for every single vehicle that you tune. Let's look at this one. Looking through this manual for this BMW, I can see there's some very particular instructions that I will need to follow to ensure I tune this vehicle in a safe and efficient way. I will need to make sure the key fob is always inside the vehicle. I need to make sure the driver's seatbelt is connected and the hazards is turned on during the right back. If I don't follow these instructions correctly, I could cause issues with the vehicle. But these are very simple instructions and easy ones to follow. And the manual will always be present if I ever need to go back and remind myself in future. Okay, now that we've read the manual and understood the instructions, let's get on with tuning this vehicle. We go back to the main screen with the vehicle list and in the bottom right hand corner, you'll notice there's a button with a little green tick on it. That allows me to select the vehicle that I've uh, chosen and proceed to the ID read and write window. Let's do that now. Before I get to the ID read and write window, you'll see that the KES is now displaying further instructions for me to follow. This is so the KES keeps you, the tuner, fully informed, and so you always know exactly what to do. Right, we're here. We're at our ID read and write window. So this is the main communication window with the vehicle. From this point on, we are gonna directly communicate with the vehicle itself. To start, let's select ID and let's take the ID. What you'll see now is on-screen instructions giving you step-by-step -step instructions explaining exactly what you need to do to communicate with the vehicle. I can see it's telling me to have a battery stabilizer connected. My battery stabilizer is connected already and we're good to go. Turn ignition on, let's do it. It's turned on, I click OK. Turn ignition off. Once again, I get the prompt to make sure I've got a battery stabilizer underlining the importance of always having a battery stabilizer connected to your vehicle. Turn ignition on. And now the vehicle has been successfully ID'd. What you'll see in the ID is it's showing me the hardware, the software, and the software upgrade numbers. So now I can see exactly what software the manufacturer put on this vehicle. Now it's been ID'd, let's click OK to save the ID. The ID is saved, I now need to turn the ignition off. Once done, I click OK. I'm now back at the ID read and write window. Now, further to me taking the ID, 
I need to add, if this was a virtual read protocol, you would not see reading in the list. You would literally see ID writing. So if you do have a virtual read protocol, what would happen? Well, you take the ID of the vehicle, save the ID, just as we've shown, and at that point, the tool will automatically connect to Alien Tech servers and see if they have a matching original. If they do, it will download the original directly from the server. And once again, you'll get a save box come up to save the stock file on your computer. It's that file that needs to be sent to the Vizu technical team. As this is a readable vehicle, we will now proceed to take a read of the vehicle. Firstly, we click reading in the list and press select. We get a message, again reminding me to have a battery stabilizer connected. Our battery stabilizer is connected, so we're all good to go. I click OK on the message. Next message, I need to turn the ignition on. Ignition on. I press OK. Turn ignition off. I click OK. Once again, I get a message telling me to connect to a battery stabilizer. That is done. I click OK. Turn ignition on. So as part of the reading process, the KES will re-ID the vehicle. But unlike the ID, we will not be able to save the ID. We can see the ID on the screen. We click OK. So at this point, we now get the message saying proceed with reading, allowing me to cancel the reading if I so wish. Obviously, we're now going to press yes and to continue with the read. At the end of the reading process, we'll get a save box appear on screen, allowing us to save the read file. OK, let's do that. We get a message advising us to turn ignition off. We click OK and we get a message advising us the read has been successful. So what you just saw on the screen there was the KES saving the log files. The log files contains all the information between the KES and the vehicle. Now we've got the read file, we need to submit that to the Vizu technical team so they can process the file and return our tune file. All files are submitted via our dealer portal. If you haven't got your invite yet, please contact info at vizu.com to get your exclusive invite. The technical team have now returned our tune file and it's saved on our desktop, ready to be written to this vehicle. Remember, always check the KES manual before proceeding. You'll find the KES manual button is still available on the right hand side of the screen. It's the open book with the hand on top because there could be different instructions that you may need to follow for the writing procedure. On this vehicle, we need to make sure the hazard's on and the driver's seatbelt is connected for the writing to be successful. We will now get that done now. Let's get writing then. We click writing, press select, and the first thing the KES wants is the tune file that we have sent to you. So on this message, I click OK, and I select the stock file from the vehicle. Please wait while the KES analyzes the file to begin the writing process. Once again, we're getting prompts from the KES system telling us we have to have a battery stabilizer connected, which we do have on this case. Next, I'm getting the message to turn the ignition on. Let's do that. I've turned the ignition on and I press OK. Turn ignition off. We get a prompt once again about the battery stabilizer and having that connected. Turn ignition on. I click OK. And once again, it's ID'd the vehicle. I'm now good to proceed. I click OK. Proceed with writing. So if you're ever unsure that you might have picked the wrong file, you can click no at this point and you've done no changes to the vehicle. We have picked the right file for this vehicle, so we're going to click OK. At which point the system says, are you sure this is the right file? Again, giving you the chance to back out of it if you have any doubt that you've picked the incorrect file. And what I'll say is, if you are ever unsure and you want further clarification, please contact the Vizu technical team. I press OK to continue. And now it's processing the file, beginning the writing procedure to the vehicle. 
Once the processing of the file is finished, the writing will begin. During the writing procedure, it may tell you to turn ignition on or off. At this point, we do get a prompt to advise us to turn the ignition off. Let's do that now. Again, regarding the stabilizer, it's telling us to connect. We've done that. Turn ignition on. We get a message at this point advising us to write the file successfully. The key fob needs to be in the vehicle. Our key fob is in this vehicle, so we are good to go. The writing procedure has now begun. The vehicle has now accepted the fire and it's written on, and we've got the message to tell us to turn ignition off. Let's do that. We get the message to inform us the ECU has been written successfully. We have now finished tuning this vehicle. Let's click OK. It'll update the logs to say, yep, the file's been written and everything has been successful with this vehicle. Once the logs have been updated, the KES has taken us back to the ID read and write window. We are now good to disconnect from the vehicle and get the vehicle out for a test drive. We would recommend you start the car at least three times after the tune file has been written. If you'd like to see more information or more videos just like this one, please see remap101.co dot uk for more information it's been a pleasure to have you here with me on this video for more information please don't hesitate to contact us at info at